Um, the other day, let me get this out of the way here. The other day we talked about the Samsung refrigerator. We were identifying different parts on the, on the, on the board. And it was this board over here. So that video is already online. All right. So we talked about what this part of the board was and what this part of the board was and, and different segments of the board. One of the things we didn't talk about was what that board was. And I, and I did a little research because I wasn't even sure myself. Uh, it's the first time I ever saw that board. But I also noticed if you look at this refrigerator, it had a very similar board here. Um, those are actual fuses on the board. And this one has about four fuses on it. And this one here has two fuses on it. So we did some research and we wanted to look at it. So this particular one is the Samsung refrigerator with the hub. And this one here, well, the, the tools in the way. That refrigerator is just a regular Samsung refrigerator, the one we talked about last week. So what I did is I, I put some slides together and I want to talk about the different boards and show you all these parts of the board here and how they're similar to this one single board where this one here has one, two, three, four, five, six different boards on it. And this one only has two, this one and this one. So let's take a look at the next slide here. Um, hold on a second. For some reason the touch screen is off. And I can't. Let me use the mouse. Can I have the mouse? I touch the screen and stuff. Okay, so if you look at this one here, this was off the refrigerator we looked at yesterday. I know the wire's in front of it, but it had four fuses on it. So if you look at the schematic here, I found it on that refrigerator, the defrost heaters, we have a freezer defrost heater and a refrigerator defrost heater. So both the refrigerator evaporator and the freezer evaporator have their own defrost systems. They both seem to be energized by the same uh, circuit. Now what they did is they put fuses on both sides of the element as a safety device. So if you had a problem with the refrigerator not defrosting, it could be one of these fuses have failed and not necessarily the heater. Now if you look from this board, this board right here, we can ohm out the bimetal and the fuses and the heater. Look, they have a thermal fuse right on the heater as well as the fuses right on the board. So that is called a fuse block. This is the part number for the four fuses. So really what it is is one side is power in, one side is power out. It goes to your defrost system. So right there, we can check defrost right from that board. Anybody got any questions on, on this one right here? No? Yes. Why they put four I don't know why they did it, but if you see the power comes in to this defrost heater and it comes back out through the fuse. Well, I didn't want to do that comes right back out on the fuse on the other side. So both sides of the heater had a fuse on it. Oh, okay. So I don't, I don't know why they did it. Right. I, I still got to figure that out, but I was trying to figure out what was the purpose of that board and what does that board do? So we're going to break down this other part here and how, how, how it goes, but I wanted to point out these fuses. So if we looked at the other refrigerator, um, this one only had two fuses. This was the hub, which is a little bit bigger unit. Um, and this one only has two fuses, but if you look, power comes in, it goes through the fuse, and then comes back out to here, and the heater. Why, why does it look like it comes up here and goes right back down there? What, why does it look like that? Anybody got any idea? Now, this other one is on the other side where it comes in here goes through that fuse and puts that fuse on the other side of the heater. But why does it look like that? Anybody got any idea? So it's in a, in a different location or it's inside a box or? Well, the board, th this board is in the back of the refrigerator, not near the heaters. But remember, if you look at it, 
that is an optional part. If we looked at the other one as well, I think it said optional. Let me see. Well, it says option right there, but I was trying to get back to the other screen here. Um, it says optional. So this, not all refrigerators are going to have that fuse block assembly on there. Um, and this one here is also says optional. So in other words, if that was on the back of your refrigerator and you, you were not having a defrost, then those fuses could stop your heater as well. So I would start there with my test. But if you had it, one heater would be on this side of, I mean, one fuse would be on this side of the heater and one fuse would be on that side of the heater. But that wire would run from the refrigerator heater all the way to the fuse block, back to the heater, back to the fuse other side and out. Yes, sir. In that picture, if you put your finger over where it says the letter B, letter B, over to the right, over to the right, more, more to the right, this that B? one, it looks like the power just goes from the back of the word fuse or around and back on, like it doesn't look like anything. Like a and B on. is optional. So in other words, A would be the way the current flows if it had that fuse block in it. B would be that the voltage just goes right through the heater if we didn't have this fuse block in it right here. But it does have a fuse block. So then it doesn't run this way. Oh. Have you ever seen like a diagram that, that, that has a dotted line run into a buzzer on the dryer, but the dryer don't have a buzzer? They said oh. if the dryer had a buzzer, this is how it would be wired on the machine. And then you'd have a dotted line showing it. And the same thing with this one. If it had this fuse block on it, the power would go here, up to this fuse, and then back to here, then through the heater, then up to the other fuse and back. If it didn't have it, it would follow path B and go straight through. So if you didn't see this on the back of this refrigerator, you would just go straight through that circuit. I keep touching the screen and messing it up. Yes. So on that last screen, we're seeing that we only have one uh, defrost heater in yes. the freezer. Now on this one, it has a, what's the name of that type of system where it doesn't have, in the fresh food section, it doesn't have a heater. It has yeah. a different form, but it does. Well, have it, if it doesn't have a heater, it's what they call cycle defrost. That's what I'm talking And what does it mean if it's cycle defrost? It uses the cycling time of the, of the, the compressor. The turn, you actually cut off the, the cool lead. temperature to the fridge? Uh, yeah, uh, but there's two other things that are happening. First of all, this refrigerator has a step valve. The other one doesn't. And what does that mean? Well, step valve will send Freon to one evaporator in the freezer, and then when it wants, it sends Freon to the refrigerator. Oh, it's like a three-way valve. Uh, that's what a step valve, three-way okay, valve, depending yeah, on manufacturer. Okay, so the first one that we looked at doesn't have a step valve. It has two evaporators, and they're, they're in series. I'll show you that in a minute. I have it up on another screen. I don't have it on this PowerPoint. But this one has a step valve. So the evaporator from the fresh food doesn't need a thermos, uh, uh, defrost heater because it's running through the cycles of the step valve. Yes, so that we can turn that Freon off of that evaporator where the other one, what, whether I'm calling for refrigerator or freezer cooling, the Freon's flowing through both evaporators. Right. So we use the heater to help defrost that. But when it's running on the other one with the step valve, the, the pressure's so low that you get frost on the evaporator. And then if it turns off, then the warmth of the refrigerator will warm it, but also what happens when you stop free up from flowing through the evaporator? The pressure goes up. Pressure goes up and it gets hot. And when the pressure goes up, the temperature goes up and, and the ice on that evaporator will melt. Okay? So that's just, I just wanted to point that out because last, last week when we were talking about the board, I looked at that and I said, well, it could be Bluetooth, it could be Wi-Fi, it could be something else. I wasn't sure what it was. So I had to do research and find it out. Remember, Anytime something new comes out, as, as long as experience I have, I still got to learn. And then I got to be able to explain to you guys how it works. So that's what happens. So those fuse blocks, the, the, the um, fuse is not replaceable. You have to replace the whole board if one of them fail. But if one of them fail, don't just order the fuse. Because you need to find out if the element was shorted or something else was wrong with that circuit that caused that fuse to fail. So I guess the purpose of it is to, in the event something fails, it can avoid damaging other components. It's a safety. Yeah. Prevent fire or, or, or short or something like that. So if you find any one of those fuses are bad, we're not going to get a defrost, but we need to find out what caused it to go bad. Okay? So 
Let's take a look at this other board that was up here. And I thought that might have been a Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth board. So I did a little research and it's called a Y cap filter. Cap is short for capacitor. These are just basically capacitors. And I just got this, I can get that thing out of the way here. Let me, let me move it over here. So Y, y, cap, y capacitors are the same as, as your noise filter board right here. We'll go over this board in a second. It's, it's basically to take out and isolate some of the frequency to make the voltage more efficient. It, it's just a noise filter in itself, okay? So I'm not gonna go too much into it. It's just on this, when you look at the circuit, that's this board right here. And all it's connected to is the ground and it really doesn't have any other inputs on it. So it's a feedback from the ground to prevent that from going off. So our noise filter is on what? Line one and neutral, power coming in. This is on the ground circuit in case there's a feedback going through the ground that that's to rule out any high frequencies coming through the ground. Okay? So that's where that board is located. So this is the board that's on the refrigerator we talked about last week. It has components and we sort of like pointed them out, but I wanted to show you this refrigerator here and show you the similarities. Even though we had all these boards, this one board does what all these boards do together. So if we look, first thing that power does is it goes into a power supply here. So this is our power supply, it usually has a, has a fuse on it. Our power supply on this one is right here. So this piece, well, I need to put it in front. So this piece is about right here on that board. This is the same part of the, the, the noise filter, but that noise filter is built onto the main board where this one had a separate noise filter. And if we went back to the pictures I had, you would see, I gotta adjust my touch on this. Um, you would see that noise filter located right here underneath. So I tried to put them on the, on the screen like you would see them on the machine. So that noise filter would go right here, for example. Then we have this right here. This is our power supply, okay? Where's our power supply on the other board? In the middle. Right in the middle. We have a transformer here and a couple of capacitors. So the power comes in here and goes to this transformer here, and this is what steps the voltage down for this board. So that's the same thing as this one here. We have a transformer right there and a couple of capacitors and stuff. So this piece on the main board goes right about here. So they put the power supply right here, right above the noise filter on the main board. Let me put that to the back. It didn't go all the way back. So what is this one? The That's the inverter that controls the compressor, which was right here. So we talked about this the other day, that this plug here and this plug here, one was the power coming in, and this one here was the output going to our compressor. So if I took this board and put this board right here, I know that it's not exactly laid out as it, but it provides the same function. So the main board on the one Samsung had the noise filter, the power supply, the inverter board for the compressor, as well as all the logic and relays that control the operation of the refrigerator. Where here, this is where the relays and all the logic is on this main board, which is a separate component. So that board on the left is the same as this board. Does it make it any better or any worse? No. But here, you have to troubleshoot each board out separately. This one is the noise filter. So if this failed, what, what would happen to the refrigerator? 
power might not power up, might not work, or something like that, might blow a breaker. What do you think this will do? No power. What? No power. That could also have no power. So if I was checking this one and this one, what would I do? I'd start here, right? Input sure. voltage. Mm -hmm. What would the output voltage be on that? Mm. Should be about the same, no? The same, because a noise filter does not change the voltage. It is clean. Though. All it does is it removes the frequency of the electricity, mainly produced by the inverter board and the compressor.